Canterbury Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Dave. And you can find us online at Wonderberry.com. You can find me online at Open Darkwing. You can find me floating in the pool, having some tiki drinks. Nice. The pool's up. Yep, pool's up. Sweet. I, cra- I did crack a pipe, so I had to take like the actual filter element out of the cycle until I fixed the pipe, which is my plan today. But later night, it's good to go. Nice. Uh, yeah. We just got a uh, thing for or my youngest uh, swimsuit, so when we come over, she can get the pool, too. Because, yeah. boy, did she get a lot taller than last year. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So kids cool. do be growing. Yeah, kids are definitely growing. Yeah. Yeah, Monday I got to uh finally put a bunch of rounds through my guns, so Yeah. They are good to go. Oh yeah. I hadn't nice. shot in way too long. <laughs> and yeah. It was nice. My my at twenty five feet, my groupings were fairly decent, so nice. I just sighted my rifle in two weeks ago. Oh nice. For I like... shot Hill's gun too, which was awesome because I'd never shot that thing before. Oh, yeah, I want to shoot her gun. Cause it's you know, honestly, it is not bad. Yeah. Um, I, it we, is, uh, oh, go for it. We, I sighted my gun in, my brother was there and I bought this laser bore sight. So you like stick this laser into the barrel of the gun itself and it like stabilizes Yeah. in the barrel and then you just point it at your target and sight it in. Um, oh, cool. So I, I sighted my rifle in for like 300, 400 feet or something somewhere around in there i don't know it's just like the length of my parents property from like their barn to the back edge of their property nice uh my brother kept bitching the whole time he's like that's dumb why would you you gotta sight stuff in for like 50 feet like you you don't want to shoot more 50 foot and i'm like motherfucker i shoot raccoons out of the trees when they're attacking my chickens (laughs) like i need i need i need the distance like that's yep. what I'm shooting. I need to. Sh- I need to. I need to be sighted in for range, like this. I serious distance. Figure out the distance that you need, or that you're most commonly shoot for, and shoot or sight for that range, and then you can calculate. You can do the calculations backwards and forwards from there on the sights. I yeah. don't know how your your scope is. If you can click it to re to to adjust the sights, or if you just use the built in, the, the dots that are built into the. Yeah, I, I don't know. Used, I don't know how your scope is, so I just use the dots built in. Which then this past Friday <laughs> we had some friends over. We had a little fire. We're sitting around having a beer, and a fucking raccoon just walks right across the yard <laughs> and <laughs> climbs up into these. We got these big ass evergreens right here, right by the pool, like right yeah. in between. In between the house and the shop where we parked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I climbed over there and climbed up into that tree. And so I walked over. I was like, that sure didn't look like, you know, it was dark out. It was in the shadows. I was like, that didn't look like a cat. That looked different. So I walked out there and everybody's just sitting on the patio chatting. And I walk out and I see it. I'm like, yeah, that's a raccoon. It's just like hanging in the tree, like right at eye level, looking at me as I'm looking at it. And I'm like, Isaac, grab grab the gun out of the case. Uh, ammo case is in the closet, and the cl- there's magazines in there ready to go. Like, because I, c- I always keep, I have two two magazines for the rifle, and I keep them like half full, just for just so I can like. Us- usually, when I have to shoot, it's like shit there's ruckus in the chicken coop i gotta run out there now you know so i keep them i keep like five rounds in each each clip but yeah um so i i was like hey grab those grab the flashlight off the island and then i just stood there and i stared at the raccoon he brought the gun out the the raccoon was like six seven feet away from me (laughs) i couldn't fucking hit it for nothing (laughs) <laughs> I, went, I went through my whole clip 
And then I handed a gun to him. I was like, here, yeah, your turn. <laughs> like, I I grazed it. Like, I'm, I think I got it through the shoulder. And it, like, scurried around in the trees a little bit. But it never really got more than, like, 10 or 15 feet away from us. And I'm like, fucking fuck. This is the hardest thing I've ever shot. <laughs> Trying to shoot this close with a rifle. And he he got a couple shots. I think he grazed it once and it, it kind of it fell out of the tree and then it was just like laying on the ground we tried to hit it again and couldn't hit it couldn't hit it and i was just like uh it's like you know i want to step back i'm gonna do something stupid so i just like held the rifle right up to it like mm -hmm. inches away from it. i was like this isn't gonna miss right <laughs> he's like yeah let's pop <laughs> finally <laughs> just like yeah got it and put it out of its misery he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> that was." He was like, "That was, that was hard." Like, "Yep, yeah." Like I was, I was showing him. Like I was pointing at the trees in the back. I was like, "Dude, normally they're like way, way the fuck up in those trees in the back. They're like, you know, 150, 200 foot tall or whatever." Yeah. Like normally they're up there, like way the fuck up there, and I, I can nail them every time. That was damn near impossible. <laughs> Doing shooting five feet away from myself and trying to hit something like hit hit a you know a large cat sized animal out of a tree was damn near impossible. Yeah, she has the Glock forty four, which is a twenty two long rifle Glock pistol. It's the same ergonomics and like frame of a Glock 19 Gen 5. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got that because I have the 19. And so I figured that if she learns learns how to handle and shoot, even if it's a 22, you know, she's got smaller hands and you know, a smaller frame and doesn't like recoil, which is fine. Um, but it's the same ergonomic layout. So Everything that she learns on it for automatic, if she needs to use mine for whatever reason, just a little bit more of a kick. Not much though. It's uh, it's not bad. Yeah, that's that's something cool that Glock does is they keep everything pretty well the same. Yeah. So like I have a the... Gen Four Glock 19, and she's got the. It only comes in Gen Five for the 22 LR. So the only real difference between the four and the five is that I've got uh, finger wells. Hmm. The one thing that, that I think Glock does stupid is their naming system. Yes. No, I, Glock, I totally agree. You said Glock 14 is a 22? Uh, Glock 44. 40, 44. Glock 44 is a 22. Glock 22 is a 40. And Glock 45 is a 9. And Glock. Glock 42. I think 19 was a 45. <laughs> No, Glock 19 is a 9 mil. Glock 17 is oh. a 9 mil. 45 is uh, a 9 mil and not a 45. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, the Glock naming conventions are, are crazy. Glock 42 <laughs> is a 380. Yeah, Glock 42 is a 380. It's, 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 it's what it, it's, it's something else. I gotta say, it's absolutely something else. <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it, I guess it is what it is. Whatever. Yeah. Hey, Dave, do you, do you yes, ever sir. watch golf? Do you ever watch golf? Uh, occasionally. Occasionally. Did you see the, the, see the big thing about the merger going on? Yes! So, yeah. I... Mm, I, I saw, like, I figured it was going to come at some point because so many people wanted to go play on the live tour because of, uh, the, the purses are so much better. Like you don't have to be in the upper echelon of golf in order to actually make a decent amount of money at it anymore. Yeah. It took away the gatekeeping for making it a viable, um, a viable career choice for a lot of people. 
You know, you no longer have to be an old white man to enjoy golf. Right. Do you see the the control setup for the 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 PGA contains like still retains control of holes one through eight and twelve through eighteen. Yeah, I'm not. And, and then the Saudis get nine eleven. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. So yesterday, uh, first time in months that I've actually slept in. If I slept in, I mean, I woke up at 730. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm usually up. Like, uh, my watch vibrates to kind of get me out of, like, the deep sleep because I tend to sleep very heavy, very deep. So my watch will vibrate at 5.30 to kind of get me out of that, and then at 6, I get up, usually. That's when my alarm goes off. 6 or 6.10, one of the two. Anyway, so I'm like, okay. I'm... I I got up late. I was a little upset at myself because there was some stuff I wanted to get done, and I was like, you know... While I'm here, I wonder, because I'm, I, you know, I was supposed to start school next week, I wonder if any of my professors have updated the syllabuses to find out if I have to do anything prior to these classes and all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So I go and I log in and I, I click, I'm like, oh, cool, the, both of my classes showed up on the thing on Canvas. So I click on it and it says, uh, um, it, it has the announcements and the announcements was, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. That was posted Monday. And I went, huh? <laughs> I had clicked the wrong Tuesday on my calendar. So I'm sitting there drinking uh, my coffee in the morning at seven forty-five in the morning, realizing that my first class starts in 15 minutes. So I officially started classes up again yesterday. <laughs> nice. You want to talk about a panic of a holy shit, what am I doing right now? That was that was a little bit much. Thankfully, yesterday's classes, because I had, you know, we had two classes on Tuesday, two classes on Thursday. And thankfully, um, it went very well. Like it was mostly like introduction stuff and all that. So, but it was, it was a little bit of a, Oh shit. Wake up call for, I need to start classes now. (laughs) Yeah. Fun. (laughs) Oh yeah. So I'm taking, um, my illustrated class, for they, they they use adobe stuff which is okay i guess but um it's for vector image so i got a vector image class in the mornings and then raster so photoshop in the afternoons my instructor my instructor for the afternoon classes is my program's chairman he's one of these old head tech guys like he remembers using photoshop one Back on the Mac in the like early nineties, late eighties type time frame. So he's yeah. one of these old old heads that does that. But he always constantly is going back to school at IU for any time they have new media stuff and all that. So which is awesome. But he also is a very staunch opponent to the Adobe subscription system. And so he's like, I'm only teaching you this class on Adobe because I'm forced to, but I'm here to tell you Adobe is not the only way to go. And I've made a career of not using Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it's, it's going to be a fun class. I think, you know, cause at first I was like, Oh man, it's an, it's an old head. And I'm, you never know how prof- old head professors are going to be like my design fundamentals professor. She was somewhat older and I liked her a lot because of the conceptual ideas, but she kept referring that how easy we have it because back in the day they had to cut all this stuff for magazines. 
And I was just like, you know what? I, I don't, I don't need that. I just, just teach us the shit. What's he, what's he think about the generative AI building into, so into Photoshop? This was, he, he loves it as a tool. He said, I, he says that um, he's not banning it. He's actually going to let us use it and encouraging us to use it because as he put it, if you can do the, you know, because he was giving like an example yesterday of animals made out of metal parts. And he's like, these things look amazing. You know, he's shown us the, the generative AI stuff for actually like building creatures and stuff. And he's like, this is amazing. He goes, this would have taken me 12 hours to do. And I just did it live on zoom in 12 seconds. Yeah. He goes, so here's what I would do with it. He goes, I would, he says, I'm not going to dock you anything. You won't get points for it. But if you were to take individual pieces of these now and cut them out and reassemble them to something else, he goes, I have no problems with that. So he's, <laughs> he's very much okay with using AI where it makes sense. Um, right now in Photoshop, it's an extra package that you have to sign up for because it's in a beta and because we all have student stuff i don't think they're allowing it too much for student stuff yet hmm. yeah i think it, yeah i think it was still in beta but um yeah he's he's he said that because he went through some struggles with trying to get exactly what he wanted and not being able to word it properly. And so I made the, I ended up making the joke that it's not going to replace any designers because AI requires a client to give accurate, clean information about what they want. <laughs> and anyone who's ever worked with a client knows that you get at best 75 to 80% of what a client wants. And you have to kind of guess at the remaining 20, 25%. And hope that the client likes it. Yeah. It's it's not going to replace us. It's going to become a tool. And he's very much about okay. utilizing all tools available to create a clean product. Because the pro end product is what matters, not the tools that you use to get there. That's good. And he goes, he goes now I will tell you this. He goes, if you run into a problem... He goes, you know, learning the fundamentals is still a good idea, even if you have an AI that can do it, because you may run into a situation where you're using a different piece of software that doesn't have the AI capabilities, but you want to get a similar effect. You have to understand how to build the effect. Yep. So it, like, he is all about the knowledge and utilizing tools available. So I am, so, oh, I'm so looking forward to that, that class. Cool. But yeah, no, I was, I was cracking myself up because of, it was just, damn, how did I mess that up? <laughs> I really <laughs> screwed that up. But it worked out. But now I'm, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I now have school, apparently. Yeah. All right. I, I just looked this up while, uh, right, right before that story. You were talking about Glock's naming, naming conventions, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is fun. So here are all of the Glock 9 millimeter, 9 by 19 millimeter guns, right? Okay. The Glock 17, the Glock 19. The Glock 19X, the Glock 26, the Glock 34, the Glock 43, the Glock 43X, the Glock 45, the Glock 48, the Glock 47. Those are all 19 millimeter. What, 19? Yep, or, or 9, nine millimeter. Nine, nine mil. by 19. Yeah, sorry, 9 mil. So those are the 9 mils. And they're, they're different sizes and different, you know, like they are different in a bunch of different ways. Then you have the 22 long rifle, which is the Glock 44. Then you have the 40 Smith and Wesson, which is the Glock 22, Glock 23, Glock 24, Glock 27, 
and Glock 35. <laughs> then you have the 10 millimeter, which is the Glock 20, the Glock 29, and the Glock 40. Then you have a 45, which is the Glock 21, Glock 30, Glock 36, Glock 41. <laughs> then you have the 45 GAP, which is the Glock 38, 7, 38, and 39. Then you have the 380, which is a Glock 42. Then you have the 357, which is the Glock 31, Glock 32, and Glock 33. At least those are those are one, two, and three, you know, sequential. But those are the Glock guns. So who did it first? I Glock believe or Windows. Uh ooh. Ooh, well, Windows made sense until 11. Windows, Windows made sense for about four years in the middle. Well, okay, let me, let me, let me take that back. <laughs> they got away from the, so, mm, so Windows is weird because Windows it changed, went through. changed conventions three different times, and now it's back to the original. Because it it was originally, they like well the original release was three, like public release was when you know it was Windows three, and then it went from that to Windows ninety five, because it came out, they they named it with year which they did again with ninety eight ninety eight, and then and then two thousand two thousand slash Millennium Edition so. That's that's the one thing because two thousand two thousand was, was from the end two different line, things because they had the home they had the home windows which was your three three point one ninety five ninety eight I still consider ninety eight second edition as a separate version of Windows because it was so much better than ninety eight yeah that was Windows ninety nine really and then. <laughs> Alongside of those, they had the enterprise business class windows as well, which was the NT series. And those were no, more, no, more normally named. And then when 2000 came around, the NT version became Windows 2000, and the successor to 98 SE became Millennium Edition, which did not last very long, thank God. <laughs> and then through XP and Vista, they started merging the two so they would only have one release out because that's when you started getting your home and pros. Yeah. And then after Vista or XP and Vista, they went back to a number system with Windows 7. And then you had 8 and 8 point whatever it was, 1, 5, 9, I don't remember. Um... Because that was, they were kind of on tablets and stuff. And so they were trying to get a, a touchscreen specific version of Windows that was kind of more lightweight. And there's other lightweight Windows, because I didn't even touch Windows CE. Fuck, I forgot about that bullshit. Because that was the compact edition. So that was the one that they ran through. Um, What did they do? So CE was like a... Palm Pilot style, so it was like a a handheld, a handheld system for CE. Hmm. And then they had the the eight series. They skipped nine and ten, and I don't know why they did that to go to eleven, which is where we're at now. Yeah. Which I actually really like Windows 11. I, I guess I'm an unpopular switched. opinion. Yeah. I haven't really looked into 11, so I don't know. 
You're still running seven? No, ten. Oh, window was was there a window? Oh yeah, there was a Windows ten. Yeah. That's right, because I remember the hoopla when upgrading to eleven. I just upgraded to eleven because whatever. I did wait a bit though. Cause there were some problems early on. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, no, I mean it's I I appre I mean as much as I want to complain about Windows anything else has just been an absolute grab bash. Cause yeah, it's, it's just not, not as fun. I mean, don't even get me started on Linux. <laughs> Cause that gets somewhat insane pretty quickly or Mac. Yeah. But I guess I guess Mac would be more understandable if I actually used a Mac, but I'm not paying that much extra for hardware. Yeah. I get it, but I'm just not doing it. Yeah, speaking of which. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to bring those things up. $3,500 for a VR headset. You can build a fucking computer. I, sa I said this to Christy last night. I was like, you could build a computer and buy, like, the HTC Vive and the, you know, all the trimmings for yep. less than that. She was like, yep. yeah, but I couldn't build a computer. I was like, well, point is, the point is, you could buy a computer that's <laughs> you, VR ready for the H is, HTC Vive. You, as somebody who wouldn't build a computer, could go to Best Buy, or you know, I was like, you could you could go to Best Buy and be like, I need a I need a VR computer, and they would set you up with everything to run like Steam games in VR, and it would be less than that. <laughs> so she was the like, one thing. Hmm. So, and then we I, laugh I, because I, I will, we knew people will buy it. They will yeah, buy but, it. Well, it's it's not just that. So I'm not going to justify the price. I'm I'm going to leave the price out of it for a minute. It's more than just a VR headset, because with Oculus, with Vive, with any of these other ones, when you put it on, all the, all there is is screen. These, yeah. these are like if you were to take Google Glass in a sunglasses format that could overlay, it could utilize them as both glasses to see through because they are, you can see through them. Like, yeah. So it's, it's 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 more it's more than just a VR headset. It's it also could be used for augmented stuff for other things because you can look through it. You can utilize it like a, a, a heavy pair of goggled sunglasses that also are a screen. It's it's kind of hard to. It's it's more than an, it's more than a headset and it's more than just like a heads up feature like what Google Glass was. But it's kind of like a mix between those two. Hmm. So it's 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 a little bit more but once again, I don't know if I can justify that. That's that's some that's some crazy pricing. But yeah, it's it's more than it it, it looks nice too. It looks like a bulky pair of ski goggles, which is kind of nice. But <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a mixture 
it's a mixture between a VR and an AR device. It's it's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't quite get it. I, 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 I don't think. I think for a Gen One, it's really interesting. Um, I would like to see those done scaled way down into a sunglasses format where the lenses themselves are are your your hollow lenses and i'm sure it'll get there at some point you just look how clunky the freaking the first iphone was and you'll you'll understand yeah that thing was a brick <laughs> i never had one so i didn't care Yeah, no, I didn't either. Um, honestly, I think the only thing, the only thing stopping me was the fact that I was on Verizon and not AT and T when it came out. So <laughs> I went and got a Moto Droid because I was coming off of BlackBerry. I, I ran BlackBerry for a long time. I bet you're glad you did now, though, right? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I appreciate Android and Google. I really like their stuff, but sometimes I feel like Google more recently than in the past is trying to push harder technology before it's ready to stay relevant yeah yeah and so i don't know i don't know it, it it's it's less it's becoming less and less of a stable polished system on release and you know and yes i could i could choose i could switch back from away from the pixel line to samsung and wait longer and all that stuff and maybe there is value in that but i don't know the i've i've been tempted a few times i've been tempted a few times to um to switch to see how it goes but then i don't know it's it's always been one of those temptation things however i haven't had a lot of the problems with the pixel 7 pro that some people are saying and i don't know what i'm doing different or what they're doing different so yeah i don't know Because a lot of people just have problem after problem after problem after problem. And I have a feeling that it doesn't seem to be as mainstream. So I'm guessing they're trying to root or do other stuff. And it's something that they're doing to their phones. But it just, I don't know. It reminds me of when I had a phone and when a mutual friend of ours would always go through and he would tweak his phone until it broke and then wonder why it kept breaking. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I've, I've, like I said, I've thought about it, but right now I'm still deep eyeing the, uh, the fold. Yeah, it looks, looks interesting. I don't think it's available on T-Mobile yet.
But, oh, I'm looking forward to it. We don't know when it's coming just yet, but they say <laughs> it is coming. So I think what I'm going to do is once it does arrive in stores, I'm going to go pop over to a store, hold it, play with it, all that fun stuff. Because I've got the jump. So I think once my watch is paid off, the savings back over, I can probably justify a little extra month. But I'm really looking forward to this thing. It's It's going to be... It's going to be something else, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, it looks like June 27th. Is when it's officially releasing out. So that, because right now we're on pre-orders. Hmm. So Google is still doing pre-orders, but it looks like they'll start going out June 27th. Um, they have not announced yet their pre-order or release date plans for the Pixel Fold yet. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I know Google right now, if you pre-order the Fold, is giving away a Pixel Watch with it. Oh. So if you pre-order it from Google, you get a free Pixel Watch. Hmm. And I have to say, I, I've been extremely happy with the Pixel Watch. Um, I, I pretty much charge it when I take a shower, and then I charge it like an hour before going to bed. <laughs> Other than that, I, I wear it all the time. Thanks. So the battery life hasn't been an issue too much. Um, I I wasn't a massive watch power power user. Um, so I I, I am not coming from another. I mean, I pretty much am coming to this thing. I tried. I think I tried a Zeus an Zeus smartwatch and a Motorola one, but I was pretty much a a Pebble user. And it can do everything that does plus. So, yeah, I mean, I got it. I got it through T-Mobile. So it's an LTE one, which is kind of nice. Being able to have that, not have to have my phone is kind of cool. Tap to pay with a watch. The looks I get from people is awesome. I loved doing that. I I loved doing that when. What Back when no one Nexus. was doing it. The Nexus S, I think. Yep. It was like one of like three phones that could do it. Yeah. And just like the looks on people's face, was like, especially like McDonald's, it just it's, blew people's mind. They were like, what yeah. the fuck did you just do? It's, it's a lot less now, yeah. especially with the onset of um, cards coming with tap to pay. Yeah. The thing I just I like about using my phone or my watch versus my card is that Google reassigns a different card number. So if there is a nefarious reader somewhere around a tap to pay console, they're not going to be able to utilize that number anymore. It like adds one layer of security between the two. And, and assuming that you trust Google and having, you know, you trust your Google wallet. I mean, why not? Yeah. In my opinion, at least. <laughs> it's just interesting. Yep. It is, it is a little complicated currently. I think just because they changed where... Like where stuff pops up at. Well... 
Yes and no. So the reason why this feels more complicated is because they're they were attacking two different areas. So the idea behind the wallet is to be a replacement for your wallet. And the diff and the, the idea behind pay is to be a mobile pay service. Yeah. Well, and I think part of it is now that I'm, now that I live out here in the middle of nowhere, there's not too many places around me that accept a tap to pay still, which is weird yeah. to me. So I don't really use it as often like I used to. Like when I was, when I lived in Grand Rapids, it was like freaking Speedway, Meyer, every like almost everywhere I went, it was just like boop, boop, boop. So I kept up on what I needed to do. Whereas and there's places around here that don't even take credit cards, so I don't <laughs> I don't get to use it, so I don't keep up on what I need to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't use cash, so. Yeah, I would very much like to not use cash. I, I, I it, for 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 people who like to to scream and cry about currency, there's no difference between paper cash and electronic cash because if it crashes, all of it crashes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, our our paper cash isn't backed by anything, so it doesn't matter. It's backed by what everybody else's currency is backed by. That's that's the thing that people don't understand, is that it's it's backed by a global economy and not by, you know, backed by gold is great because, you know, and, and it sounds great in concept, until the price of gold crashes because of what happens as well, which happens. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it's backed by a global economy because people are saying that, okay, well, if it's backed by gold, then it's backed by something and it will retain value in, real, you know, in case everything crashes out. If everything crashes, it should be, then gold becomes useless as well. Yeah. Because if That's... no one else's currency can buy gold because it's not backed by gold, gold becomes useless other than it just being a metal. That at cracks that, me that... up so much when I see those ads like, if civilization collapses, you want all your money in gold. And I'm like, what am I going to want with gold? Like, no, I'm I don't not going to if... accept gold as a payment for eggs or vegetables or meat i nope. not <laughs> i will yeah, accept not. i will accept ammo and food mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to yeah. you want to back you you want to you know put your money into something that would survive through an absolute global collapse invest in ammo yeah that's what you do buy a little farm in the middle of nowhere but yeah, the, the whole, the whole argument food. of the, the, the whole gold thing, I, I get the concept because caveman brain can't understand global economics mm -hmm. and gold is a tangible object. It doesn't matter because if the global economy collapses, then the value of gold is worthless. It doesn't matter if it's that's why they got out of the gold standard, because it's like, look, if this crashes out, you know, gold standard is great until someone finds a massive vein of gold somewhere. You know, you find a massive vein of gold, you double the gold market. Suddenly, whatever you had backed by gold collapses. I have a massive vein of gold you could mine, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But those are also the same people that say that they're, that they're not driving their travelers, so... They, uh, <laughs> that's pretty deep cut, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. A friend of mine's a We're... lawyer. He messaged me that there's there's someone got uh pulled over for a DUI and was trying to contact him for a for a uh, 
to for representation and he's one of those sovereign citizen guys My yeah. friend's like, no you can go find someone that believes your cause for that because <laughs> yeah. you're not going to get out of blowing a 0.23 because you weren't driving you were traveling and yeah it's it's not car wasn't registered didn't have a license because it doesn't require one because licensing and vehicles only apply to commercial operations blah blah blah, blah. like this guy just went in on it yep he's like no you were an idiot you were drunk driving with a car with no registration no insurance and you don't have a license i am yeah. not defending you in court <laughs> take the plea deal <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, 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 that was kind of a deep cut. I love I love reading those stories. Oh, the, there's the a best... good handful of those people around here too. Oh, I know. If if you're bored at some point, watch some of the uh, the body cam footage of those sovereign citizen idiots on YouTube. It is, oh, it is it is so good. It is so entertaining. It's like watching a kid try to play a game where they're like, well, not that I don't want that to be a rule no more. <laughs> now here's, here's the actual rule. I just made this up. And where you, I only get a point when this, when this goes, when the ball goes here and then you, you have to get it through there and there and there to get a point. Like it's there that was, same energy, Dave. There that was energy. a, uh, there was a judge that had one of those guys come up. So the judge, instead of sitting there just arguing with him and just dismissing him out outright, leaned into it because apparently he had done a lot of research on it <laughs> and would utilizing the terms right back to the point where it was confusing the guy so bad that he didn't know which direction was up anymore. Because I don't think he expected to have anyone challenge it on its against itself <laughs> and just did not know what to do with that. And it was phenomenal to watch. Because he was, the judge was insanely respectful and just, but just leading it into it. Those are great. Oh, well. Yeah. Summertime. Canada's still on fire. Michigan's on fire, bro. We're in a we massive drought. Air quality is absolute garbage, so... If you have asthma or any problems with dry, crispy air and pollen exploding everywhere without any rainfall to kind of weigh it down and drag it to the ground, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have bad allergies and I'm fucked. And hell, poor, oh, poor wife. She's got really bad asthma and it's just... It's been asthma fit, coughing fit, asthma, like just for like a week and a half now. And yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. It's just, it's there and it's just sucks. I feel so bad for it. I know I can't do anything, but it's just, yeah. It's literally hazy here because of the fire. We we have a, I think a national park on fire here in Michigan. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, something like three thousand acres are burning down. That really sucks. I'm trying to look it up. In wildfire grayling oh they're starting to open stuff back up oh this is the third fully contained of, as of today oh awesome 2400 acres that's insane I don't even know where that's at where's grayling uh, it's in Michigan, I think. Okay. <laughs> Good job. 
Oh, it's like upper central Michigan. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they had, supposed to stay they had, fairly dry, too. They had I-75 closed down for a couple of days. Damn. Yeah. That's a that's a major highway through the state, too. Yeah. Wild. Well, you could have the gates of hell and inferno raining down on I-95, and they wouldn't slow down lower than 80 for that even, so. Mm-hmm. 95 is a whacked-out fucking freeway. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I I don't I don't understand how every other road in Michigan can seem so sane and so normal, and the moment you get on I ninety five, you lose your goddamn mind. Is that the one where you go sideways down through the mountain? I through Michigan. That's the one that got of Detroit that runs east and west. No, that's ninety four. Or 94, not 95, 94. Same, same fucking thing. It's still the bonkers freeway. 94 is bonkers. I, I hate don't, 94 what, with a passion. <laughs> what is it? Every other place. The moment you get on 94, people just lose it. Yeah. It's, it's like a speedway <laughs> through. You're, it's it's like you get someone, on and you're immediately in a fucking. Like, someone, someone's like, hey, the Autobahn is a good idea. So let's just do that. But let's, without any concern of the elements. Let's build that from Detroit to Chicago. My <laughs> God. I was a, there was one winter that I was on there, and it was like icy. Didn't matter. Yeah. I'm over in the right. I ended up getting off the freeway because I'm in the right lane, and people are blowing past. I'm doing 50 because it's goddamn dangerous. My car's sliding everywhere. People are just blowing past me. Mm-hmm. That's ninety four is where we got hit. We we, we had come to this come to a stop on the highway, and got rear ended because people were still doing sixty seventy miles an hour into a wreck. <laughs> like there was a wreck ahead of us, which is why we all s- slowed down, and then we got hit. And so there was another wreck, and then there was like another one behind us, even further. And there was an ambulance already en route to the wreck ahead of us that was, like, just right behind us. Yeah. So they, they, they stopped where we were because they couldn't even get around us to get up to the next wreck. <laughs> and, like, and it's like that every time I'm on the road. Like, you'll be, you'll be going, like, 80, 90 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden you're stopped because there was a wreck. It's insane. It is bonkers. I don't even drive on there with my car. My car can handle shit like that. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that road is just insane. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I, I avoid freeways as much as possible as it stands to begin with. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that shit show. I don't even like taking 69 unless it's in the bedroom. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I will drive highways and back roads before I get on freeways. I just, I just don't like them. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. That's weird. It's all weird, man. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. Till next week. I suppose. We will have an what? update from Soulfest. Soulfest? Soulfest. Yeah, Soulfest. This this episode's coming out after Soulfest, so I would say go, but People won't know that because it's the day before. Yeah. Sad noises. I'll be taking well, pictures. We've, we've told everybody. Yeah, that's true. We'll have an update from Soulfest next week. Yep. Till then. Later. Later.